This is a special presentation of Fox AM. The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of IntraVision Communications, KHRO Radio, its management, or advertisers. The Fox Talks Weekend. And now, back to the show. Soldies, 1150 AM. You're on the show with Hector and Abel. I had to switch chairs because now I'm running the board. So a lot of people are going, oh, no, Abel's running the board. But uh, welcome back to the show. We're on the uh, second hour of what's been a very interesting first hour wow, with uh, Danny Villegas and uh, John Mimbella of Mimbella, Mimbella Contractors. I got that right. Uh, great story, and I'm sure we're not going to hear the end of that. But uh, let's go ahead and get into our second hour. All right. Uh, with us now the uh, candidate or one of the candidates for state representative in district 76 which happens to be uh, um, abel rodriguez's uh, uh, district in which he votes um, none other than cesar blanco welcome cesar blanco thank you uh, hector and abel for uh, having us today yeah. now i i read in, in uh in the uh, in one of the newspaper stories that uh, you and some of the other candidates have been doing some uh, internal polls um, um, it's my understanding that you spent seven or somebody spent seventeen thousand dollars. It's one of your uh, con- contributors, right. uh, in-kind contributions. Is that correct? Right. And um, and what they found was that you n- the you needed to uh, up your name recognition. Sure. Well, I said that here on the show about what three weeks ago, Abel, and uh, nobody. Paid so I don't me. even remember. And no, he was sitting next to me at the <laughs> nobody <laughs> at paid the meeting. Me. Nobody <laughs> paid me even ten thousand dollars. Right. Okay. And I already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, the other thing, it's my understanding that the, the poll said, is that uh, both your opponents are not particularly popular. That's correct, right? Uh, and and it's it's what we're going, uh, it's what we're hearing when we, when we go to door to door. Obviously, you know, I've never been on the ballot, um, so it's 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 important to educate voters, and we're doing that every day. We're going door to door. I'm doing door to door. We're going uh, phone by phone, talking to voters, listening. Most importantly. Uh, about what's important for, for them in El Paso. Um, and we find that uh, a lot of the voters are interested in change. Uh, they want someone uh, who can stay in office with some stability, with some leadership, and uh, most important, some experience. Now, the incumbent, uh, Naomi Gonzalez, who has appeared here on the program uh, before, uh, actually has quite a good record in terms of uh, the number of bills that, that she has passed. I talk to people in, in Austin that say that she's uh, uh, actually uh, uh, very good to work with. Of course, she had that incident where she was uh, uh, had an accident, a uh, charge of uh, a DUI. But uh, some people say, that other than that, uh, she really has been a pretty fine representative. Uh, how would you respond to that? Why do you feel that you uh, still uh, need to replace her? Well, a couple of things that I would do different is, um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be a very proactive uh, representative. I'd have my office out in the community, whereas uh, the current and the previous representative had an office where folks would come in. Um, I'd set up shop in uh, our senior centers and our community centers at our American Legions and VFWs. Uh, I'd create a mobile office uh, hour program where we'd go out and send representatives, and I would go to myself to, uh, to meet with constituents and to hear what uh, concerns that they have. Um, I think it's about uh, being accessible, uh, and, and that's what we hear at the doors. A lot of folks are concerned with uh, the lack of accessibility. So um, that's the difference. I think uh, uh, the other thing is, uh, I'm a team player. Um, I will work with the city, with the county, uh, with th- the other representatives of the delegation uh, to move forward uh, with an agenda to help El Paso and bring El Paso's fair share. Before we um, 
I'll let one of the uh, callers uh, uh, speak. Uh, tell us about your personal and uh, professional background. Sure. Well, I grew up in El Paso. Uh, I grew up in the uh, Burgess area uh, with a single mom. Um, we uh, uh, moved over to the Eastwood area where I went to high school and I graduated from Eastwood. Uh, following uh, Eastwood, I joined the, the service. Uh, I was active duty for six years uh, in the U.S. Navy, uh, where I served uh, in the Persian Gulf. Uh, I was a military intelligence uh, analyst. Uh, so I did about six, uh, actually six years active duty, came back home to UTEP, uh, used my GI Bill, uh, got my degree in political science. And for the last 10 years, I've been uh, working for various uh, representatives uh, that represented El Paso. Uh, I started uh, with Congressman Reyes as a caseworker. Uh, then I moved on to Congressman Ciro Rodriguez, who represented the east part of uh, El Paso. Sure. Uh, now represented by uh, P. Gallego. Correct. Uh, and then most recently, Chief of Staff for Congressman P. Gallego. For, so, um, you know, I've got a lot of experience in working for the community of El Paso. Uh, El Paso is in my heart. Uh, I also had the opportunity to work for President Obama uh, on his campaign. I was, uh, they sent me over to, to do battle with uh, Sheriff Arpaio and, and Governor Jan Brewer. Um, uh, and get Latinos motivated to, to get registered to vote. Uh, we did a fantastic job for the president there. And, uh, and I was also uh, at the Democratic National Committee where I was the Western States political director, uh, where I was able to travel uh, and staff the president, uh, write, write his briefing memos, et cetera, uh, whenever he traveled to the Western States. Now, you're married and, and have uh, any children? No, I'm single. I've got a girlfriend, but uh, I'm not married and I have no children. Okay. Um, because he's in politics. Obviously. Okay, now you have a pretty good job with, with the Representative uh, Gallego. The, uh, Actually, state, uh, I'm not employed by Congressman. Oh, you're Gallego. not with the Congressman no, anymore. No. So you've left his office, I've to, left his office to, to campaign to, full-time. I, I feel that the, that the voters deserve someone who's going to be full-time uh, to, to their needs, uh, and that's why I've committed to, to, to campaign full-time. Okay, my question was you, you're going from a, a pretty good job, a pretty good pay, to a state representative, uh, which pays only six hundred dollars a month. Right. What is your plan for uh, supporting yourself? You're not an attorney. Going to sell toothbrushes. Uh, you're not an attorney, <laughs> right? Or you don't have a a, um, a company or anything like that uh, aside from what you do. Right. Well, the the, the uh, first goal is to to get elected, uh, to set up a shop, to to make sure an office, to make sure that we uh, attend to the constituents' needs um, and work uh, with the city and the county. Uh, but then, yes, uh, obviously I'll have to uh, find gainful employment. But uh, my priority is uh, being a state representative. Now, um, you have raised more money than any of the, uh, than the other uh, uh, candidates. You're one of the, the uh, candidates in any of the races that has raised the most money. Right. Most money. We'll talk about that in a bit. But uh, first, let's go to a caller. I think uh, another Navy man on the on Yeah, the it's line amazing right how that he called. Let's go to Dave. Dave, you're on 1150 Fox Oldies. Go ahead. Uh, I was never in the Navy. I was in the submarine service. That's not the Navy, right? That's guys that go underwater. The, the, those guys are those are hardcore guys. I, I, I think Thank you guys cruise around reading magazines, no? I never. I, yeah, yeah, they float, I think. Uh, Mr. Blanco, this is the only thing I'm concerned about since I've been since I retired in '95 was veterans' issues. Right now, Wendy Davis came over here, and I, I'm supporting her because she's coming out in support of a VA hospital here, and she was appalled at our condition at our cemetery. Mm -hmm. And the president just signed a bill that uh, pretty much wipes out our cost of living increases when you retire after 20 years. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get your point on that one. Right. I, now, okay. it, now out, as far as I'm concerned, what would you do to try to get us a VA hospital here and try to improve the conditions of the veterans here that live here in El Paso? Because about 95% of us are all Hispanic, which is part of your coalition. Right. And, uh, well, so you have active duty here, you have retired veterans, and you and uh, you have a large population here that are waiting. We've been waiting for a long time for a VA hospital. And what would you do to make Wendy Davis's dream a reality? Absolutely. First of all, David, thank you so much for your service. We really appreciate it. Um, well, the first thing I would do is is uh, work with uh, our uh, federal delegation. Um, the majority of veterans' issues are federal. However, uh, as Texans, uh, we take a lot of pride on on our, our men and women who, who have served in, in uniform. So um, I have proposed to uh, work directly with uh, Congressman Beto O'Rourke, uh, if elected, uh, as well as the various uh, members of the delegation, Congressman P. Callego and other Texas members uh, who also serve on the House Veteran Affairs Committee to bring this issue uh, to light. There's no reason why uh, in a community where there are s over 60,000 veterans um, that they have to go to San Antonio or they have to go um, outside of the state uh, to get care. We should be re getting quality care for our veterans here in El Paso. So, you know, we would work at, at the state level, we'd work to see if, if, if 
if we can get a hospital here uh, by putting pressure on, on our elected officials uh, at the federal level, uh, working with the, the U.S. senators as well uh, to get appropriations to, to move, uh, you know, the priority of, of getting a hospital here. Uh, regarding the cemetery, you know, that's, that's somewhere where uh, I'm going to be laid to rest. It's somewhere where my father, who served uh, in the Vietnam era, is going to be laid to rest, and, and uh, I, I've got relatives who served there uh, in World War I and World War II. Um, I support uh, the regressing effort. Uh, there's no reason why uh, there's a golf course across the street that's, that's full of grass, and, and, and our veterans and our families that come home uh, to, to uh, visit those that, uh, and remember those uh, that have passed and served uh, their country uh, should go to something somewhere where there's just gravel. So I'd work with uh, local organizations like uh, uh, our veterans groups that locally that that have been pushing for that issue, um, and and you know obviously work hard to get Corpus uh, Cemetery regressed. Now, D- now, Dave, I saw something on Facebook uh, relating to a meeting I think that that occurred uh, relating to the grass at uh, Fort Bliss. One of the uh, the people that have spoken to us here on the on the radio posted something. Uh, Frank, right? No, it was not Frank. Remember it was Frank? Uh, um, Raimundo. Um, Is it Ray Rivera? I think that's, that, that's right. who it was. And he posted uh, something relating to a, a meeting, I think, that occurred, and he was not happy. I heard about that. Um, I wasn't aware of that meeting either. Um, you know, I think one of the things that we do, I, I'm a Mar- um, uh, member of the American Legion here in El Paso, member of the American GI Forum here in El Paso. Um, I think what we need to do... Uh, one of the biggest problems is um, recruitment. Uh, we need more young veterans uh, sure, to get involved, sure. uh, especially because they're, you know a lot of the older generation of veterans are 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 in their 80s and mm-hmm. and, and, and 70s. And they're passing away. Absolutely, we need new young veterans to take uh, the torch, so to speak, and and bring this these issues of grass, these issues of the veterans' hospital. Uh, to the forefront. Uh, it's, sure. it's for the betterment of the future of our, our veteran community here in the Puzzle. Dave, you still there? Well, yeah, well, the good news is that we just got we just got learned that the uh, Fort Bliss is not going to be hurt with the base realignments if there's going to be any. So you're going to see a large population of influx here right. with active duty um, soldiers, and they're going to want to stay here. A lot of them, and as you guys know, I'm active with the VFWs around here in the city and with the American Legions, and we try to recruit the uh, the active duty as well as the retirees here. And one of the first things they'll tell me is they can't believe uh, about the conditions at our at our hmm. at our uh, VA. And I and I I try to tell them that it's getting, believe me it's gotten a lot better than it was. Right. But, hey, Dave. Uh, thanks for the call, brother. And, and thank you, sir. And uh, good luck, Mr. Blanca. You keep it up, and I'll I'll, I'll be there for you. Thank you, shipmate. Eight eight zero four three seven six. We got a caller on the line that we're going to go to. We're on about a minute before the break. What What are the issues that you see are the most important uh, in this election? I think uh, there's a lot at stake at this election. I think we need to focus on uh, uh, moving from low-skill, low-wage jobs in El Paso to high-skill, high-paying jobs. Uh, So we need to work with both the city and the county uh, to recruit companies that help uh, various areas. One, we've got got Fort Bliss and White Sands in this region. We need to to increase and improve our, our, our defense industry and research here. Uh, we also have the Medical Center of Americas, uh, where we can provide amazing research. So we need to, to, to improve recruitment and uh, create opportunities here in El Paso for higher skilled jobs. So that's one of my, uh, one of my priorities. We're going to go to the break. We'll be back after these messages. You're on the show with Hector Nabel. Okay, Sergio, and I remember. The best thing in our life is free, but you can give it to the birds and bees. I need some money. Need some money. Oh, yeah. What I want. Your love give me such a thrill But your love don't pay my bills I need money Fuck Need some money Oh yeah What I want 
Fox Soldies, 11.50 a.m. I can't, I can't hear myself. I don't know what happened, man. Let's see, how about, oh, there I am. There Fox Soldies, 11.50, I, I, I fake myself I'm up. trying to tell you, we, we hear you fine. I, 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 but I can hear myself <laughs> on the headsets. I hate having to do all this, but that's okay, because uh, that's what uh, I learned back in 1977, uh, how to run a well, board. Well, so. we, we got to hear a little bit more of the money yeah, theme yeah. song. Well, that was, it was good. Uh, and of course, if you're a politician, that's exactly what you need. You, you need money, well, money to get in it, and uh, obviously this guy's uh, raising it. How is it that you've been able to uh, uh, raise uh, uh, so much um, uh, money for your campaign? Uh, Cesar Blanco is our guest, in case uh, you just joined us. He's a candidate for District 76. His opponents are the incumbent Naomi Gonzalez and the previous incumbent uh, Norma Chavez. So we've seen that uh, the, the amount of money that you have raised is a bit more than, than the Representative Gonzalez. Uh, you've raised a comparable amount. but. Um, uh, former Representative uh, Norma Chavez has trailed badly. Um, what, what is going on there? Are, sure. are, are you uh, receiving some of the, the contributions that uh, she might have received in the past? Uh, uh, do you have... Uh, or maybe just it, knows how to fundraise. Dude. Well, I, mean, I was about to say, is it that you work hard and have good connections? Well, you know, first of all, I, I want to thank all the El Pasoans that, that have contributed. If you look at our records, um, I've, re I've raised more money uh, most of my money is from El Paso, El Paso. These are hardworking people that believe in this campaign. They're hardworking people that believe in, in, in the need for change in this district. Um, and you've also gotten some criticism that you've gotten some uh, uh, pretty good sized donations from uh, Washington, D.C. Right. Uh, Representative Gallego is supporting you. Uh, right, right. So, and, and most of, uh, we've got a tally actually at, at the office of, of all of those people from Washington, D.C. The vast majority are Texans. And they're Texans with, there are, there's a lot of excitement uh, throughout the country of expatriate Texans that want to contribute to candidates that are true Democrats. They really want to change Texas blue. You wouldn't uh, get the money if they didn't, uh, they didn't feel you were doing a good job or they knew you, right? Right, right. I mean, yeah. these are all folks that, that, uh, that, that, are, that have been friends, that, that believe in changing Texas blue. And they want to turn, turn Texas blue, and they don't consider the current uh, representative as being blue enough. She is uh, um, funded in part by... TLR, for example, the Texas uh, right. uh, lawsuit look. reform. Um, she's been criticized for supporting uh, DeMargo, the local uh, Republican. Uh, I didn't form, criticize her for that. Former she hasn't well, been criticized. Well, I mean, some people have. the, the um, You do have to work as a team, right? You've well, but, but the, the you, know, no, no, you know, maybe the general public uh, says, oh, well, that's great that, you know, they work. The Democratic Party went berserk. You know, bipartisan, <laughs> all that. But the strong Democrats, the, Demo the real Democratic Party people, are upset or have been upset with her, and, and many of them feel that she's not a, a true Democrat. I mean, that, that truth be told. Right. I, you know, there's a saying, Bill Clinton used to say, follow the money. Follow the money. That's, e that's the easiest line to do. Right. Way, I mean, I mean and it's in the report. Most of her money, uh, Naomi's, uh, comes from Austin. On the other hand, she has also said that uh, she took uh, TLR money, but that doesn't mean that she always voted for them. She also has a good record of working with the... Uh, the local delegation, and uh, I tell you, people that I talk to in Austin uh, speak pretty favorably of her. Right, in Austin. Uh, but the important ones are in El Paso, uh, the voters. Uh, and the voters have a different uh, perspective. The voters feel that... The ones that you've been talking absolutely. to. Let's absolutely. Go, let's go to the phone lines. People want to talk to you. Let's go to Frank. Mm -hmm. Frank, you're on 1150 Fox Oldies. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, Cesar, uh, I would like to uh, my number uh, with you so you can call me Monday. I've got some things to, I'd like to discuss with you. If you don't mind, I can either get off the air or on the air. It doesn't matter. We'll, we'll get we'll get it off the air. I'll put I'll put you on hold before I hang up on you. All right. So okay, I'll get that. your number. But go ahead. Okay. Number two is when I started working and and getting these things together with Vets for the Green, I, I noticed something that I wasn't aware of, and that is you got the VFW, you got the Foreign Legion, you have got the Vietnam uh, veterans. I think that's the American Legion, not the Foreign Legion. Yeah, the American Legion. I'm sorry. Then you got the Vietnam. Well, War I belong. Guy. I was in the Foreign Legion. I, I believe that. <laughs> okay, then you got the 82nd Airborne, and you got this. And you use the number of 60,000, which is a pretty strong number, and I think pretty accurate. But the thing is this we're so splintered that there isn't a, an or, a main organization that it, they can all go to and, and get to. Now, if you get 60,000 times their wives or, 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 or husbands and daughters and friends, you you got a, a large block of voters, a huge block of voters. And the problem is that we haven't been able to coalesce all these votes together. 
And I think for the first time, I've noticed that. So the other things I'm trying to do is try to get an organization strong enough to show people that, you know, El Paso is huge in terms of veterans. And it's, if, if they don't listen to us, they're going to have a tough time getting elected. Not because we want stuff done our way. It's because we have the right to get these things done because the number of theater veterans and people that we have associated with us. Absolutely. I agree. Hey, Frank, thanks for the call. I, I, Frank, uh, absolutely. You, you touch a, on a very important point. Every time I, you know, when I go to a door, um, if, you know, they're a family of a, a veteran, a, a grandmother, a, a, a daughter, a father of a veteran, uh, it's huge. It's not, it, it, 60,000 are just the veterans. Uh, we're not talking about dependents. We're not talking about uh, family members. But you're right. Uh, we need a, 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 a leadership. We need someone to bring all the veteran groups together get on the same page uh, and, and ask for something, uh, whether it's for Congress or for the U.S. Senate, uh, for our state uh, legislators, for our state senators. That takes leadership. Um, and I think uh, Frank is absolutely right. Uh, we've got a lot of great organizations that do a lot of great things uh, in our communities. We need to bring them all together. Let's go to the phone lines again and talk to Nacho. Nacho, you're on 1150 Fox Oldies. Go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, Cesar, um, very decisive question. I was wondering... Do you are, are you careful uh, in making sure you brake for bicyclists while you're driving drunk? All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Nacho. Next caller. I, I'm I'm sure yeah, that I'm, I don't know. I, you know, uh, I'm not going to comment on. I, I, I figure you wouldn't want to answer that one. <laughs> okay, uh, do we have another caller there, Abel? Uh, no, we're going to the break. Okay, we'll be uh, back soon. This is the show with Hector and Abel. Our guests. Cesar Blanco, candidate for state representative, District 76. <laughs> what do you say your call letters were? KHRO El Paso, 1150 Oldies Radio, Fox AM. More Oldies to Fox. Like I said, I'm running the board. And I'm getting chastised. And now you're playing blues music where I should be drinking booze. <laughs> listen to that, listen to that. Oh, yeah. You hear that? Yeah, that was the yeah. first shot going down my throat. Did you hear that one? <laughs> Back on the show with Hector and Abel. I'm Abel Rodriguez running the board, so don't pay no attention to me. But should we go to the callers? You know, that, that's LC Good Rock and That's some good right stuff, there. man, that's right there. One of the greatest musicians I ever saw. Wow. What, was he on black and white TV? The, the late right Good Rock and Robinson. <laughs> I actually saw him in Washington, D.C. Really? You've been to the Folk Life Festival that they yeah, have. Yeah, sure have, yeah. Well, uh, you know how they have it there, in, there on the mall. Mm -hmm. Well, the first time I visited Washington, D.C., went to the Folk Life Festival. Elsie Good Rock and Robinson was playing. He's like a, a Texas or California bluesman, I think originally from Texas, but played guitar, violin, harmonic, uh, wow. steel guitar. I mean, talented individual. Anyway, let's go ahead and go to a uh, talented individual on the uh, on the phone. Let's go to Susie. Susie, you're on 1150 Fox Oldies. Go ahead. Hello, Abel and Hector and your guests. Hello, Susie. i got to ask a question, Abel and Hector, because it seems like they make a big deal because DeMargo said that he could work with Marissa and Naomi. Mm -hmm. But there was no big deal, and I don't know if your guest worked in Reyes' office at the time when DeMargo decided to run for state senate and was in um, the ballot running against Elliot Shapley, and Sylvester Reyes supported and endorsed um, DeMargo. And there was no... Now, now did, no he, did he actually support and endorse him, or he, he was, sure did. Or he'd failed to endorse uh, he was, Sylvester He was Shapley. even in his commercial, wasn't he? I yeah. don't think so. Yeah, yeah, he was That's walking up to Fort Bliss Gate, I remember very well. And, and there was no mention of that, but... Um, I don't know if that's an endorsement, but, you know. Well, uh, I, I don't know, Susie. I guess um, the fact that you... It's a double standard. You're saying it's a double standard that's it being sure used against... I didn't, I didn't have any problem against with Against Naomi too. Gonzalez and, and Marisa Marquez. Pardon me? You think it's a double standard? You think that, that if it was not a big deal that... Uh, 
uh, Congressman Reyes. Uh, I remember it as him not having supported Senator Shapley as opposed to supporting. It was still uh, a legal right. article when Gary Shar was still doing. Um, okay, well let's 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 concede that that uh, point. But, but I remember that. Do you, I remember do you that see article. that as some people see it as working across the the aisle, or do you see it as disloyalty to the uh, Democratic Party? Obviously, you don't. No, because uh, no one made a big deal about that. Nobody made a big deal when Norma Chavez was in the Texas legislature. She was a cratic D. Exactly. No one made a big deal about that. But since uh, Naomi Gonzalez beat um, beat Norma in 2010, and Marissa Marcus beat Paul Moreno in what was what year was that? 2006. And Beto O'Rourke beat Reyes um, two years ago. Everybody makes a big deal, and there's anti this and that. Well, we're not going to support this person. We're going to support Barbara Carrasco because Beto O'Rourke beat Reyes. Now, well, was that supporting the Democratic ticket? But I, th- I think that, that comment is directed to Abel right now. Well, but whatever. I'm just saying that. I'm just bringing it up as a... You know, but you know that you know the guy we have on air right now is running for the district. Well, right? what what right. comment do you have, sir? Well, I, you know, two things. Um, one, I'm a Democrat, and I will only endorse Democrats. Well, were you um, working in I right don't. The office? N- number two, um, you know, as 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 a legislator, you need to work w- across the aisle. Sure. Uh, as long as you don't dem- you know compromise your democratic ideals and values, um, but it, it's important to. You know, work across the aisle. You, we we have to look. I've worked both in in, in a Democratic majority uh, legislature and, and a Democratic minority legislature, and it's important uh, to build those relationships. It's important to be able to work across the aisle in order to bring back El Paso's fair share, and that's what I've promised to do. Um, Will I go endorse uh, a Republican uh, who's running against a Democrat? Um, you know, uh, I, I can't see myself doing that. Now, um, uh, Representative uh, Gonzalez and Representative Marquez said they actually did not formally endorse him. All they said is that they worked with him. They got along with they him. They like him. They respected him. <laughs> On the other hand, they did appear in his campaign yeah, materials. That's what, so, right. that's uh, what made everybody uh, mad. Well, I, right. think, I think most people would say, regardless of what you say, if your uh, positive comment appears in his campaign materials that's an endorsement i do i do come out and is that not an endorsement uh, uh yeah. susie what did they know about it or did they oh did sure they, they did sure campaign? they did uh, sure they did yeah they, they uh, did know about Shapley it at the time was a sitting democrat uh state senator for district 29 and d margo decided to run as a republican against him and sylvester reyes endorsed him there was a big article two-page article at the time by gary shar when he worked the el paso times worked the austin bureau I, I don't. I don't remember the congressman having formally endorsed him. I, I remember people saying that that he supported him and that he had, did not endorse Senator Shapley. But maybe the congressman himself can call and and straighten this whole well, thing out for us. Uh, and I want to know a question: um, What do they have against um, Elliot Shapley and the people that support and have worked uh, closely and would be called Shapleyites? What? Is they have done a lot of good things for this community, and I'm very proud of what they've done. Hey, Susie, thanks for the call. Thanks. Let's go to the next caller. Now, she made her point. I mean, we gave her plenty. Uh, let's go this to the This is America. Th- you can say what you want. Uh, I'm running the board. I'm sorry. Said, I, it was not a cutoff. I, you made your point. Let's go to Mojo. <laughs> okay. Mojo, you're on 1150 Fox Oldies, oh. and uh, I, I will not cut you off uh, that bad. I'm sorry. Sorry, Susie. All right. Um, okay, you got Hey, what's shaking? What's shaking, you guys? How's it going? All right. Good, Mojo. Go right? ahead. All right. I uh, wanted to ask your guest how he feels about public-private partnerships and the likelihood of their success, for example, the ballpark here in town. Sure. And I'm going to hang up and listen to an answer. Thanks for the call, Mojo. Okay. Later, dude. You know, I think uh, public-private partnerships are important. Uh, you see the example of what we have uh, at the port of entry. Uh, we have a situation where we've got very slow lines, and we have a situation where uh, El Paso's economy relies heavily on, on tra- you know, cross-border trade. And we have half a bridge built. <clears throat> right, right. Um, I, I support them. You know, as long as, as, long as they, um, you know, the agreement fulfills the intent. And as long as the, the agreement uh, provides a service uh, for our community, um, I support them. On the other hand, um, you have um, privatization going on as well as uh, public-private uh, uh, partnerships. One of the, uh, something that uh, we discussed uh, last week uh, relating to NAFTA and the upcoming uh, uh, Trans-Pacific uh, uh, partnership is how um, what's going on in, in many instances is that uh, uh, major corporations uh, 
um, global getting everything uh, they want. Corporations are essentially getting everything they want. And here locally, many people feel that uh, despite the fact that, you know, not only do the people that uh, Susie mentioned have, have done some good things, but some of the uh, um, uh, investors in the ballpark, uh, right. Paul Foster just gave a million dollars to the, the zoo, uh, to the zoo right. which, you know, not only benefits the, the military families, but it's also is going to benefit the zoo greatly because right. that's money that goes to the uh, zoological society for uh, memberships and that they can uh, then turn use for uh, uh, further development. They of can the buy zoo. your. They can buy your favorite monkey. What's the, what's the one you always talk about? The Obubu <laughs> or Obano? Or, the, you, hey, you know he worked at the zoo, right? <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, he did work at the zoo. Look, I he, worked at the zoo. For, yeah, for, really, for well, a number of years. He just yeah. escaped uh, yesterday. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, 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 we'll talk more. In fact, you know, we're needing to, to talk about the uh, zoo and animal. Uh, uh, we got to get topics. them on. Yeah. But but again, uh, so yes, public private uh, partnerships. But at the same time, there there has to be transparency. Absolutely. Uh, you're you're well aware of the uh, open records uh, controversy that that occurred here. Um, relating to the issues uh, relating to the ballpark, and so sometimes and now that's going on in New York, well, uh, and, well, and actually New Jersey. Well, sometimes, right. here, sometimes here in El Paso, it's it's kind of like if you're critical, uh, people criticize you because you're negative, you're a naysayer. Sure. Uh, but on the other hand, sometimes there is a need to for the uh, the public, for the taxpayers, uh, to keep an eye on on, on uh, some of these public so-called public-private <laughs> partnerships that, and, and in particular in the case of stadiums, usually benefit the private interests and, and the taxpayers end up uh, holding the back. Sure, look, if you've got local government uh, and they're in agreement with uh, private entities about building something, take it out to the community and sell it. Let the, you know, l l let's see what, you know, what the folks and the voters uh, and the taxpayers uh, feel about it. I think it's important that, that the taxpayer and the voter has buy-in. Um, those things are good. I think it's important. If, if it's a great idea uh, and folks uh, believe in it, then, then let's move forward. Uh, there's not, I, I don't see anything wrong with selling the idea. Just take it out there and, and, and propose it and, and, and let folks uh, make a decision on whether they like it or not. 8804376, our guest is Cesar Blanco, who is uh, running for state representative, District 76. If you live, if you live in District 76, you need to call and ask a question. Okay, uh, tell me what's the difference between you and your other two opponents? The difference is that uh, my two opponents uh, were elected to their position. I've worked my way up uh, through uh, just about every single position in a congressional office. So I know uh, how to do constituent services. I know how to uh, help senior citizens and veterans get the benefits that they've earned. Uh, I know how to do projects like fund uh, uh, streets, uh, pave roads, uh, build uh, community health centers get veterans access to health care in rural communities like Far East El Paso or, or even out to Hudspeth and, and Culberson counties. Um, I've done it, and I've also done it at the highest level uh, as a chief of staff in Washington, so understanding how to move legislation. Um, I want to use my skill set to help my community that gave so much to me. I, I grew up in El Paso, uh, you know, uh, my, all my familias from El Paso, uh, you know, so for me it's about giving back. Uh, and that, I think that's what sets me apart. I, I don't come with any political rivalries. I don't come with any political uh, baggage. I get along with everyone. For me, it's about helping our community and adhering to my military service and translating that into public service. Now, tell us a little bit about uh, El Paso as far as uh, jobs. You know, I mean, uh, let's face it, we're, 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 high above, we're higher than the state average on, on, on joblessness. Right. Uh, we, we, we are looking for jobs. I can tell you... Um, hearing every week at the end of the week from a very good source that there are more and more people applying for SNAP. Right. Uh, there are more and more people uh, 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 piling on applications, and there's a problem within these organizations that handle this stuff right. because they don't have enough people working right now to handle the workload of the new people that are coming in that need help. Right. A and yet, you don't hear anything about, well, if we had more jobs, we're going to get in trouble because they're going to say that it raised you know, raising the, the taxes and all that kind of stuff. But the fact of the matter is that there are not enough people working in these agencies uh, like Texas Department of Human Services that handles all kinds of stuff, including Obamacare. Right. You know, and, and, and yet they don't have enough staff. Right. I think that El Paso needs a plan. I think we need to get our city, our county, our federal dele uh, um, um, delegation, our state reps, and our uh, state senator all on the same page. What we need to do is develop a plan um, where we want El Paso to be 20 years from now. 
Uh, and that includes the private industry, the business industry, our hospitals, and our education. Manufacturing, uh, man. Manufacturing. We need some manufacturing in Absolutely. here. Absolutely. And we need to move away from low-skill, low-paying jobs. We need high... Look, El Paso uh, is, is the size of cities like Portland and Kansas City. We need to play in our league. Uh, we need to create a plan, uh, push all of our political rivalries and, and, and political uh, uh, alliances aside and come together with the business community, with the labor community, uh, with uh, uh, our higher education community, our schools, and our political leaders to get on the same page. Uh, it's difficult to do, but you've seen these situations like San Antonio where Mayor Castro brought together and, and put together uh, SA 2020. We need El Paso 2020. We need a plan to move this city uh, to the next level. Uh, and, and that includes that, that 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 means we need to collaborate. One of the most successful things we do have it is a, a uh, lower economic uh, schooling system with Region 19. Bl- Dr. Blanca Enriquez runs the number one Region 19 in the nation. A lot of people don't understand that that lady's in charge of millions of dollars of federal funding that is sent down to help kids that wouldn't have an opportunity to go to preschool or anything like that. Right. We're talking about four, four, five, six, I think. Right. A, a age group a, and giving them an opportunity that by the time they get to the first grade, they're, they're right up there with anybody else that went to preschool. Absolutely. And, and that's, a, that's another, you bring a very important point. Early childhood education, the studies show yes. that uh, kid, ch- kids and adults, once they become adults, are far more successful uh, once they, if they were in an early childhood education program. Head Start, uh, Pre-K. Um, I will fight for Pre-Kinder for El Paso. Uh, I will fight for more Head Start funds here in El Paso. It's important uh, you know, San Antonio has done it. Other cities in, in, in the United States have, have done pre-K. We need to do the same thing here in El Paso. Let's go to the phone lines. Let's talk to Roger. Roger, you're on 1150 Fox Oldies. Go ahead. Uh, Abel, Hector. How's it going, Roger? What's up, Roger? Uh, I'm calling. Uh, I, tu- I tuned in late, and I just heard some discussion on the different veteran organizations. And uh, I, I think that we're fortunate that we're having uh, young, intelligent people running for the district, 76. But if you allow me, I would like to put in a plug for an uh, American GI Forum. Sure, go ahead. Which is holding a tardiada a week from Sunday. And it's pretty incredible. It has to do also with getting groups together because there's different ways of doing it. And one of our goals is to network with other groups so that we can empower our veterans and, and also to uh, help our kids. And uh, there's going to be a tardeada, and Little Mike is going to be playing at the Crystal Palace on Sunday, December, uh, January the 26th. Fifteen bucks for live music and beer and setups included. You can't beat it. Hey, Roger, um, can you email me that? You should still have my email, right? Uh, if, if not, if not, uh, you can, uh, I'll put you on hold and I'll give it to you so we can get that information out. Right. I- I'm really surprised that GI Forum isn't stronger in, in, in this I, city. I was it hoping is. to try and get on your, on your program, Abel, and maybe I can still do it before the end of, uh, uh, before Sunday's year. That'd be fine, yeah. but send me the information anyway, because I have other outlets to put it out on like our Facebook page and things like that. It is, it is. Uh, and I know Roger, we serve together on the American GI Forum and we're putting together a plan that, that, that boosts. Uh, membership. We are having a hard time, uh, and it's, it's part of our discussions and our meetings that we need more young veterans to get involved. Um, we we got to pass the torch. Uh, the, the The older generation veterans have to pass the torch to the younger younger ones, uh, and and I encourage uh, everyone to attend La, uh, La Tardeada. That's going to be great food, great music. Uh, Roger and, and and everyone at the GI Forum have been working very hard uh, to do that. And I, I think uh, I think Roger's even donating tamales, right, Roger? I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where you draw the line. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> this time. <laughs> Thank you for calling, Roger. Appreciate it. Okay, Cesar. So good luck. 880-4376. Our guest is Cesar Blanco, candidate for State Representative District 76. Uh, we talked before about how you've been uh, very successful in, in uh, fundraising. You still... Uh, have have a way to go and raising your name recognition. Uh, right. What what is the uh, campaign going to be like from here on in? Are you expecting to put some uh, television ads on? What is your plan? Our our plan is to talk to voters, and and that means at the doors and it means on the phones. Uh, this is a grassroots campaign. Uh, we've got a lot of volunteers coming out. In fact, today we have about sixteen volunteers out there talking to voters. Um, folks want change, uh, and and people want 
uh, to turn the page on, on, on the old style of El Paso politics and, and start new and start fresh. Uh, so folks are out there volunteering every day. But that's the plan, uh, to go out there, talk to, talk to voters every single day. But most important, and, and here's what I need to emphasize, is that it's about listening to voters. It's about hearing their concerns. Politicians a lot of times go out there and talk, but they don't listen. Uh, our campaign is about people's visions, people's concerns, uh, and that's what we're going to do and take to Austin. What else would you uh, like to uh, communicate to the, uh, the voters? Where, uh, we, we've got a few minutes left. I'm sure we can take another phone call, but uh, sure. if you would uh, just go ahead and, and whatever you want to communicate to the Absolutely. voters. Absolutely. Well, I'm, you know, I'm running uh, for state representative to, to improve our situation here in El Paso. We need better, high-tech, high high-paying jobs here in El Paso. Um, I'm one of those uh, young professionals that left El Paso uh, because uh, there weren't a whole lot of opportunities here. But I've come back. I've come back uh, because I want to make a difference and, and help create an environment that creates those type, those type of jobs here for, for our folks graduating from UTEP, uh, folks graduating from Texas Tech, community college, uh, and even high school. Um, right now what we're seeing is a huge deficit in, in, in areas of you know, plumbing, electricity, uh, electricians, mechanics. Uh, college isn't for everyone. We should prepare folks to go to college, but we also have a huge deficit in those type of trades that are very important. Um, what, what about economic development? Uh, you know, we talk about it. Uh, we uh, we talk about it all the time, but we, I just don't see it happening. Other than what's going on in downtown, and uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I like going to five star, uh, you know, small restaurants, right. but uh, I can't go to all of them. Right, right. You know, there's got to be something else out there to you know economically develop this city. Well, you look at our. You look what's. Uh, you got to look globally. Okay. You look what's happening around the world. Uh, large businesses are looking at China and India and saying it's too expensive to move product across the ocean. Uh, so they're start, starting to look at Mexico. They're starting to look at uh, uh, Latin American countries uh, to set up shop there. And it's closer proximity in time and, and cost to bring goods to the consumer, meaning the United States, meaning Mexico, meaning Canada. How are we going to capitalize on that opportunity given our geographical location? Here in El Paso and Juarez, we're the largest international metroplex in the world. We've got to capitalize on that. We've got to capitalize on, on that opportunity. Uh, we need our elected officials to get on the same page to come up with a plan to capitalize on this rare opportunity. Um, that's a huge economic boom to our community. Uh, think of the trucking. Think of the, 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 the hotels. Think of the manufacturing. Think of all... Uh, uh, the ripple effect that that would have uh, on our community. Uh, we need to hurry up and, and, and put a plan together or, or, or another well, community. We, we end up having stop gaps like what the city did with the uh, bridge crossings of trying to pay for more people to, to keep the bridge uh, lanes open, and yet it comes back on us mm -hmm. instead of being something that should be federally funded right. because of the fact that we are the largest landlocked border in, in the world. Right, right. Well, that's, that's why we need to hold our, our, our elected officials accountable to make sure that they're all on the same page and speaking in one voice, both in Austin and both in Washington. Um, we, we, we've got to stop the political rivalries. El Paso already has enough standing in its way. The last thing we need are elected officials fighting each other uh, here at home. Uh, and fight more in Austin and in Washington for El Paso. Well, you've been to Washington, right? And I've, I've only been there one time, and I, I soaked it all up. But one of the things when you go into the Capitol building is they tell you about a slogan that I wish was closer to people that would be in their face. But it's the slogan all the way on top of the, of the I guess, the rotunda area there. And, and, and the phrase, and they bring it up, and it's real simple. It's e pluribus unum. Right. From many ideas, one. Right. And I think that's where we're missing the boat because from many ideas one from a group of people instead of the whole absolutely we're, we're broken up into like gangs you absolutely. know and, 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 and that that's what staggers any kind of uh, movement in washington and, uh, and and like you said you worked with you worked in the in the when you were uh, the minority and also the majority and did did much get done anyway right exactly it didn't it's you know and it goes back to my military training you're more effective when you're a unified unit when you're a unified unit going after an objective, uh, you're going to be successful. If you're all over the place, uh, if your corporals and your sergeants and your uh, petty officers and your chiefs are all over the place and not on the same page, you lose. Same concept. we got to be a unified city, unified uh, uh, elected officials on the same plan. 880-4376. We've got just a couple of minutes left. If you'd like to ask a question or make a uh, comment to... Um, 
Cesar Blanco, who's running for state representative. Earlier uh, on the radio, I was listening to one of the Republican candidates for lieutenant governor, and he was talking about uh, um, the borders and you know how he's going to uh, secure the border. Here we go again with that. Before, uh, yeah, and then and um, he's going to be against um, amnesty. Um, there's a lot of that uh, w uh, type of thinking in Austin, particularly with the Republican uh, majority, the uh, the Tea Party members. Mm -hmm. um, what will be your uh, position relating to the border, and what um, how will you uh, address border issues? The no, you know, here in El Paso, uh, we we know how we've got to figure it out. We know how to balance security and balance trade. We got to find that balance where we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot if we do too much security, um, and we can also shoot ourselves in the foot if we have too, you know uh, open uh, 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 ports of entries that aren't safe. We got to find that balance. They don't get it in Austin, and they don't get it in Washington. Uh, our border communities know how to move trade securely uh, and and safely. Uh, and they should take a, 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 a you know page out of our book. Let's go to Danny. Danny, you're our last caller. You got about a minute. Go ahead. I just have one word, uh, and if he could elaborate on that on on the taxes, the property taxes. Hey, thanks for the call, man. Let's see what he says. Okay, now property taxes are not the uh, the bailiwick of the state representative, right. but still, uh, but uh, still it's an issue for you to address yeah. anyway. Sure. I mean, look. Uh, you know, I think, I think we need to look at property taxes. Uh, I feel, and I would propose that uh, we freeze property taxes for uh, folks 65 years or older. Um, I think they've, uh, they've done their time. They're on fixed incomes. Uh, I think we need to, to, to protect those property tax owners. Um, many times y you see those folks getting into debt. We need to make sure we take care of them. So in terms of property taxes, I would propose a freeze uh, for, for those 65 years or older. All right, we're at the end of uh, today's program. I want to thank you very much, uh, Cesar Blanco. It's been nice uh, meeting you. Thank you to your staff member, thank you. Uh, Carla, for helping to set up the, the interview. And we'll see everybody uh, with another great program next week. Well, that's great. it. Let's oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Quickly, I just quickly plug uh, www.cesarforelpaso.com. Uh, come visit us. Our campaign headquarters uh, is on Paisano and Gateway East at 5630 uh, Paisano and Gateway East. Uh, come join us. Come join our movement. Let's move El Paso forward. Well, that's the end of the show. I'm glad you were on this weekend. We'll be back next week. Te watch your raza. 1150 Oldies Radio, 5 a.m.